move on to number five, which is mercifully a bit simpler. Consider the two scatter plots below. So I've got data A, data B, which statement best describes the two sets? And uh, there's a statement about A, and there's a statement about B. So the way that I do this as a sort of exam technique, if you like, is to look at the things that uh, I know are true and then kind of uh, reduce down the options from there. So it's fairly straightforward to see if you draw a trend line, let's choose a different color here, a rough trend line through set A there, it has um, all of the data points are sticking very close to this rough line of best fit. And in addition to that, the line of best fit has a negative gradient. So what that tells us is number one, because they all stick close to the line of best fit, there's a strong correlation there. And if you have a look at uh, all of the different answers there, that's no surprise. They all say strong correlation. The question is, is it positive or negative? Well, because the gradient of the line is going downwards, it's a negative gradient. So therefore it's a strong negative correlation. So when I look at the answers, only parts B and D say that A has a strong negative correlation, so I know it's gonna be one of those. Then when I have a look at B, data set B, um, doesn't really have much of a correlation at all. There's not really any way you can draw a line of best fit through that. I mean, all of these lines kind of, uh, they're, they're all terrible. None of them closely match the data at all. So what that is to say in this case is, there's not even something that's vaguely close to some of those lines. Everything is just completely scattered. So this is what we call um, not correlated at all. So if I have a look at the answers, that's going to clearly be part or answer D. So that's gonna be my answer for this question. Okay, moving on to six. Which of the following can be classified as categorical ordinal data? So you need to know what these two important phrases are or these two important words, categorical and ordinal. So categorical, you might need to remember, it's uh, something that has to do with, it's, it's not numerical like one, two, three, four, five. So it's non-numerical or you know, you might hear this called um, words like this is, this is not something which I just have straight numbers. There are categories here. And then when I say ordinal, what that means is, as the name suggests, you can put those uh, different categories in some sensible order. So for example, it's not an example here, but uh, your grades for your um, exams and for your reports, A, B, C, D, they're not numbers, but there is clearly an order to those results. So that would be ordinal data, as opposed to say something like, what's your favorite kind of music? Uh, you know, R&B, hip hop, rock and roll, it's like, well, if I were to put them in a list, one, two, three, which one would I put them in? Everyone would disagree about what order we would place them in. So that would not be ordinal data. When you have a look, A, B, C, D, which of these fits being non-numerical and also something you can place in an order? Um, time spent playing games each day, that would be, uh, uh, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours. Um, B and D are kind of a giveaway because they say the number of people at a football match. Um, and then C says your position in a queue. Now, I think this is the best answer, part C, because when we think about how would you describe those, you'd say they'd be first, second, third, those would be your positions. These aren't exactly numbers. I mean, I'm using words to describe them, but the numbers are, um, these are cardinal uh, things that describe order. And because there is an order, first, second, third, otherwise it's not much of a cue, that's why I can say it's ordinal data. All right, now the last statistical question in the multiple choice is number seven. The chart below shows the favorite summer sports of students. This is a Pareto chart. So you can see it's in uh, order of, uh, from swimming, cricket, all the favorite summer sports, it's in decreasing order. So the most popular is swimming and then cricket and so on. And then you can see that that's shown by the bars, but the line graph, this part here, this shows the cumulative frequency as a percentage of, well, if you include all of the previous sports, um, then what do you get up to? And you can see by the end, once you get to hockey, that's, um, you've accumulated all of the other sports behind it. So the cumulative percentage there gets up to 100. So that's the way we read this. How do we use it to interpret uh, this question? It says, what percentage of people said cricket was their favorite sport? 
So there's a long way and a short way to do this. Um, and this is a trap for people who aren't entirely sure how to read the Pareto chart and interpret it. You can still get the right answer doing it the long way, but it's just gonna cost you for the time it takes to work out um, that calculation. And then later on, you'll find you run out of time for other questions that you could actually have done if you had the right amount of time. So what is the long way? Well, a percentage of people is usually that amount divided by the total. This is the percentage of people who said cricket was their favorite sport. Now, the graph tells us, if we zoom in a bit closer, cricket is this second bar here, and um, that's where it goes up to. And you can see, if you read off to the left, um, from 140 to 160, there's, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five marks. So um, that makes them each four. So it goes 140, 144, 148, 152, and so on. So this is the 144 mark. So you could say, oh, there's 144 people out of the total number of people uh, who have given the results for their favorite sport. But that's a very long process to go through because they don't give you a total. You have to calculate it. You have to read off this bar, which is 180. You've got to read off this bar, which is 132 by the looks of it. You've got to read off every single one, add them all up, and then divide 144 by that total. Um, you can do it, you'll get the right answer, but there is a much faster way if you remember how a Pareto chart works. So remembering that this line part of the graph, um, this black line that goes all the way through is a cumulative percentage. So what that tells you, for example, if you have a look at this first data point here for swimming, what that means is um, 60 well, not 60, that's the number of students. I should go over to the other side. Um, let's have a look here to the percentages. So I'm um, going over to there. 30% of the students said swimming was their favorite sport. 30% is 180 of those students. And then I can say, well, once I have a look at the next part of the cumulative percentage, um, that goes over from here. I'm going to go straight across. There we go. So what part of uh, the percentage axis does this meet up to? Well, 50 and 60, there's um, again four marks in between, so it's going to go up in twos here, 52, 54, 56, 58, up to 60. So that makes this one 54%, and I compare that to 30%. So if I include swimming and cricket, because it's cumulative, remember, um, that means there are 54% of the people who have swimming or cricket as their favorite. I'm not interested in swimming or cricket, I'm interested in cricket only, so I'm going to remove all of the swimming people out of there, which is the 30% that we calculated just now. So therefore, I would say, for just cricket, it's going to take these two calculations, or these two numbers rather, 54% take away 30%, and that's gonna give me just the cricket figures, which as you can see, if you have a look down in the possible answers there, that's part B for 24% much quicker than actually going through calculating every other total um, and also a less error prone because it's quite hard. You can see I even made a brief mistake trying to read and interpret the graph. You have to be super careful. Um, so that's the easiest way and the fastest way to get there.